Hi, and welcome to today's lesson, Order of Operations, Other Grouping Symbols. In our previous lessons, we talked about our parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, and addition, subtraction. This lesson, we're going to focus specifically on other types of grouping symbols besides parentheses, absolute value, and division bars. So let's discuss absolute value first. We use absolute value as a grouping symbol. Let's go ahead and start out with these two problems. We will put our triangles around them to help us remember we work one line at a time. And here I actually have two operations. I have subtraction and absolute value. We can think of absolute value as an operation in the fact that we are going to have to perform something before we can get to the answer. Anything that's inside those absolute value bars we treat it as if they're parentheses, but at the very end, you'll find their absolute value. So let's go ahead and get started. On this problem, we have negative 13 minus 3, which is negative 16. And then we'll take the absolute value of that, which is positive 16. On this problem, I have negative 18 divided by 9, which is negative 2. Then I'll find the absolute value of negative 2. Absolute values are very similar to parentheses. The other type of grouping symbol we're going to encounter is division bar. And we can think of this as a fraction. Remember, a fraction also means division, and we looked at that in a previous lesson. So let's go ahead and practice with these two problems. This first problem, I'm going to treat the top, the numerator, and the bottom, the denominator, as two separate problems. There's nothing to simplify down here. There's just two. But on the top, I have 3 plus 7. So before I can do anything with the fraction bar, I have to add together the 3 and the 7. I'm going to pretend like there's parentheses around the 3 and the 7 because that's what division as a grouping symbol means. And that's why we have division bar as a type of grouping symbol. So. On the top here, I have 3 plus 7, which is just 10, and then I have 10 divided by 2. Well, I know 10 divided by 2 is just 5. Over here, same thing. This 8 down here doesn't have anything to uh, do. There's no operators. But on the top, this 4 is 4 times 4, which is 16, times 4, which is 64. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify my numerator here, and I end up with 64 divided by 8, which is just Eight. So now that we've looked at those two things separately, let's put everything together. Remember, I always work grouping symbols, then exponents, then multiplication division, then addition subtraction. And remember that these operators need to be worked left to right. Also, I might not have every single operator inside each problem. So if I don't have an operator, for instance, exponents, I would skip it and go to the next one. Here are my two problems. Let's start by creating our triangle for neat work. On this one, I notice that I have something on the, an operator on the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to solve these separately. Remember, you only want to do one operation per line, so I'm just going to work the numerator up here. So 12 plus 4 is 16. I'm going to rewrite the rest of the problem. So I have 16 divided by the quantity of 7 minus 11, because I want to think of this as parentheses around it. Next, I work 7 minus 11, which is negative 4. So I have 16 divided by negative 4, which is just negative 4. On this, I have my absolute value bars, but then notice that I have a number outside the absolute value bars. We said that the absolute value bars were very similar to parentheses, and we should treat them like parentheses. So any time that a number is next to parentheses and there's no operator between them, we know that's multiplication. So that's the same here. So let's go ahead and solve our absolute value first. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. So we have 6 times the absolute value of negative 10. I'm going to find the absolute value of negative 10, which is positive 10. And then that's going to turn into just regular parentheses. Once you pull it out of the absolute value bar, if you need to use parentheses still, you can just use parentheses because that's what it means, grouping symbol. 6 times 10, of course, is 60. Let's recap. We know absolute value 
we are going to treat absolute value bars as parentheses. We'll find the absolute value when there are no operations inside the bars. So there's no more addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division to do. For a division bar, we will treat the numerator and the denominator as two separate problems. Then you're going to divide at the end. That wraps up our lesson. Thanks so much for tuning in. Feel free to click to subscribe to watch this and other videos. Until next time.